Okay, first we'll go through the pitch shifter. Make sure the knob's turned all the way to the left. That's how you know you're on pitch shifter. It only actually starts working when you turn the pedal on and off. Your pitch knob obviously controls the pitch. The legend is down on the bottom. If you have it over to the right one, you're going to be up one fret from your regular note. Next one should be two frets. So you're up a tone. Then we're up five frets, so a fourth. Here's one that's a uh, cool feature of it too. We can play chords. So here's, you know, a C power chord. So it raises everything. The tracking's pretty solid on it too. Next, I think it's a seven. So that should be your uh, perfect fifth. Now this should be an octave. And now if uh, our balance knob controls the amount of effect, this is all effect and no dry. Now I'll play in the same register and have it just be dry. So it's got kind of a nice effect to it. Then we can be up two octaves. Get ready. Give that a all wet signal. Obviously you can hear it picks up the overtones and things like that. It's not very friendly that way. It kind of gives it a really nice steel drum effect. And of course we can go the opposite way and go lower. That would sound just as awful like that. But basically, you have an octave pedal here as well. Oops. We can go down two octaves where it's not great. I'll play a high C up on the fifth fret. It's pretty much not audible when you start to get really low. And that's the pitch shifter. Uh, next one, and this is my favorite, I love this harmonizer on here. So we just go one to the left of the uh, pitch uh, shifter, sorry, one to the right. And same kind of deal, the pitch here controls our uh, what our harmony level is. So of course we got a basic third, a perfect fourth, a fifth, a sixth, and then we have one octave and two octaves. So it does offer some of this uh, similar features to the pitch shifter. These ones are a little bit smoother, I think. Uh, same deal, you guys just got to turn it on to have it be on. If you want just neutral, turn it off. The uh, blend knob does the exact same thing. Speed knob's not doing anything. Now this one finally comes into play here. This is our key. So we choose the key in which we're playing. So we have to keep it in one key and any accidentals are going to sound pretty pretty bad. They're going to sound out of place because it won't know the note to harmonize with. So I'll do C major, A minor of course because that's a nice easy one. And I've just got my blend set at neutral here. So uh, it's going to be a nice combination of the two. <laughs> Tracking's not perfectly solid, you can hear it has a little bit of a delay. Here we are going fourths, going in fifths, there's our sixth. There's an accidental, you can see how nasty they sound. Okay, we have our octave, I'm not sure why it's not so bad, or good like that. And then we have two octaves, see the tracking isn't great and if your intonation isn't pretty much spot on, it's not going to be solid, you're going to hear the dissonance. I like using the harmonizer down a third on my bass. Pretty cool anyway. 
And that's basically the same thing, otherwise you just change your key depending on which one you're playing in. Alright, next we'll go through the detune effect. This one's one of my favorites because uh, it's kind of like a chorus -y effect, but not quite chorus and not quite tremolo. It's, it's really nice. So we make sure we've uh, got the knob here to detune. Now finally this outer knob will do something. This will control the delay time, so it's just until that uh, effect kicks in. So it can bring the detune effect in it's just slightly after you've played the chord or note. Uh, and then the pitch controls the sense, so it's 5 cents, 10, 20, 30, and then it goes to 100, I think. It goes pretty much exponentially. So you won't mo uh, notice much of a difference here. I've got the effects blend just at neutral here, 50-50. You won't notice, uh, notice too much of a difference with that. But it's there. You go up a couple more and then you get a really nice effect. down too. You can hear it worked with chords. This is another one of those effects that works with chords. Really nice. It almost gives it its own little natural reverb. Next we'll go through the T arm setting. This is great, especially when you're playing bass, because you don't usually have a whammy bar on your bass, and it gives you that same kind of effect. So we make sure that we're over at the T arm with our mode. Uh, our pitch is going to choose how far we choose to dump it, up or down. The speed knob will uh, choose, of course, how fast it will go from the original note to the new note. So I'm going to have that about neutral, and this becomes kind of our volume knob, so I'll keep that just that neutral as well. So here you'll just see it, you hear it just go up just a little bit. But it's really cool if you set it up an octave. The sound lasts for as long as you're holding the pedal. When you let go, it drops back down. See how when you turn the speed knob down, it takes longer to go back, and then so it'll make it shoot right up. Okay. Now this one's especially cool, the expression pedal, because it controls, just like a uh, uh, whammy pedal almost, just controls the pitch going up and down as you go. Okay, and then up two octaves. That's always cool too. Here you go, here's down an octave. the notes being sustained, it'll work. Now it's pretty cool. All right. Next we'll go over the flutter, which is pretty much the same as the T-arm, but instead of just dumping it one way or another, it's going to go up and down. It's going to waver that way. So, pitch knob just does that, it goes the exact same as the T-arm, you can have it go up an octave, down an octave, you can have it go up a tone, semitone. Um, this is going to be our effect blend, this is the speed at which it'll go. Not my favorite. Slow. 